Happy New Year, everyone. So I've been testing the UX582, this ZenBook Duo here, for the past three months. And while I'm not really gonna talk about the specs a lot, because every other review kind of does that, what I do want to talk about is actually using the device. And I think this laptop, for every pro that it has, there's also a con. So I kind of want to walk you guys through that, my experience with it, and if it might be a good choice for you. This is my first laptop review, so hopefully you find it useful, and let me know down in the comments below if uh, you'd like to see more laptop reviews as well. So let's get into it. So first I want to talk about the screens of the ZenBook Duo. Now, for the pros side, obviously having two screens is one of the pros here. It keeps everything in a more compact package, uh, unless you know you are someone that uses a regular laptop with a second external screen. Uh, this is just a more cohesive package in that sense. And you know the OLED screen is absolutely gorgeous at a 4K resolution. The bottom panel also has the same width, so apps will scale pretty well between the two. I think having a touch screen on both is actually really nice. Because the trackpad here isn't you know, the largest or easiest to use, I do actually find myself using the touch buttons on both the top and bottom screen a lot more frequently than my other laptop that has touch capability but has a much bigger trackpad. The second screen touch interface is actually very good. I think they've really kind of customized certain categories to help it just integrate better with the, the top screen. You can flip stuff up and down really quickly. You can also create quick app pairs and kind of setups to divide this bottom screen nicely. And it has its own kind of settings for the display, the control center, and the window control gesture stuff you can do as well as battery saving for the bottom screen. It's actually also really nice that the bottom screen has pen support. So, you know, pretty good for quick note taking, jotting stuff down, drawing if you want. I find that having a little bit of angle on the bottom screen is actually nice for writing purposes. It also is great for, you know, signing stuff and whatnot. Now getting along to some of the cons, the laptop itself ends up feeling quite heavy and dense. It is rather thick. I'll compare it here to a regular laptop, but you can see there's quite a noticeable difference in heft there. Uh, and at over five pounds, about 5.2 pounds, it does, you know, kind of weigh a sizable amount and a large part of that is due to the second screen and the mechanism and all that. One con that I didn't think would actually be that much of an issue for me was actually the angle of the screen. It doesn't really angle as much as I think you'd want it to. There's still some space between the second screen and the first screen in terms of like a visual gap. Uh, I know the new 16 inch uh, Zephyrus I believe the mechanism of the hinge actually pops up. It pops up like that, but it also now slides back that way, kind of eliminating that, uh, that gap in viewage there. So that might actually be kind of cool. I'd really be interested to check one of those laptops out and see if that little bit of difference that they just announced at CES might, might make a change there. Another disappointment that I had personally was not being able to use Armory Crate on the bottom screen. I know the Zephyrus lineup, the Duo lineup supports that. So I reached out to customer support because when I downloaded the Armory Crate software, I wasn't getting the information tab that allows you to do like the custom overlays for GPU info, all the stats of the laptop, which I thought would have been something cool, you know, to sh display while gaming. Turns out that is not supported on their non uh, ROG or tough lineup of stuff. So if you do want some monitoring stats, you could do like IDA 64 down there or have some other custom stuff like MSI Afterburner or, or your NVIDIA software perhaps showing in-game overlays. But out of the box doesn't really support that. I think that's a little bit of an oversight given that it does have a 3070, which is a very capable graphics card. 
Now the next thing I want to talk about on this device is the power. With an i7 that's 8 cores and an RTX 3070 with ray tracing and the latest graphics, it's really future proof. So I can see this thing lasting you at least three to four years if you, you know, take good care of it and whatnot from a hardware perspective. Now the cons of having all that power are the shorter battery life with all those specs and then also the second screen, you are gonna look at kind of lower battery lifetimes. I've kind of gotten between the six and seven hour mark with like casual usage. If I'm doing anything heavier, it tends to narrow down to the four or five hour mark, um, perhaps even below if I have like everything running. You can disable the second screen, so that's always an option if you are doing something more intensive up top and don't wanna compromise on your battery life there. Another con is that with all this hardware that's very powerful, it can actually run a little hot sometimes. So I actually ended up undervolting the GPU a little bit um, so that when I'm playing games, it's not uh, running super hot. I also think, I can't help but think that with this cooling mechanism, you know, as it's blowing hotter out the sides, the screen does prevent a lot of the airflow. So even though it's open, um, I'm not sure exactly if this is the best cooling design that I've seen on a laptop because there's not a lot of air going upwards. It's all just kind of coming out of the sides. One of the biggest cons is this large 240 watt charging brick. You know, with the laptop weighing about 5.2 uh, and this, you're, you're looking at around six pounds to carry this whole package together. And that's, you know, a significant amount uh, my other laptop's about three and a half pounds right now, and I have a tiny USB-C charger for it. So, you know, you're going from four to six pounds. You got to kind of consider if the extra power is really worth all of that when you're lugging something around on a day-to-day -day basis. The last con in terms of power, I would say, is that the two USB-C ports here, they do not support power delivery. So if you want to charge this thing, you're gonna have to pretty much always carry around this 240 watt charger. That's your only way of charging it. Next up, I wanna talk about the keyboard. So, as you can see from this unconventional design, it's shifted a lot lower, which means that your hands kind of rest on the lip down here. And normally you're up here on the laptop so you have something to rest your wrist on more, but here when you're shifted down here, your hand's kind of hovering there so they actually, I think, did a really good job with the keyboard. It has nice travel. It's pretty satisfying to, to type on, and I actually like it from that perspective. The touchpad I actually really like on the mouse pad. So, you know, if you hold right here, you can see the numbers come up, and you're then able to just use that as your classic kind of touchpad and then boom, when you don't want it, it's off. So to actually really have a good typing experience on this though, because of that little gap I told you about here, they do have this included wedge they offer and that kind of slots in right here. So it does exactly, as I was mentioning, it extends the distance to the keyboard. That actually forces you to use the laptop a little further out. So I think the fact that to have a comfortable typing experience, you need this is a bit of a downside for sure. Cause this is not small by any means, right? Like this is something extra you have to throw in your bag or in the included uh, carry case they have. And so, you know, if you're carrying this, your brick, the pen, the big laptop, that's a rather large overall package together. The next category I determined is the ergonomics of the laptop. The second screen now tilts 9.5 degrees uh, as opposed to the first generation which was completely flat. Now this improves the airflow and the viewability as well. The top screen as well tilts, I'd say mostly enough for all the angles you'd want. Does not go 180 as you can see, but it does go more than some of the laptops that go like that. It has that little extra extra bit at the end, which I find really nice when I'm using on my desk view, or if you are kind of hunched over it a little more. Now, for the ergonomics with the wedge, 
I think because it pushes you a little further away from the laptop, you actually end up having a little bit better posture. You're not like hunched over it the entire time. So that's a good thing, I think, as well as the little triangle they provide that you can adhere under the laptop. Now, some of the cons for the ergonomics, I would say is the trackpad feels very compromised. It's quite small and there's just not a lot of room to do much on it. Every time, you know, if you wanna move your cursor from one side of the screen to the other, if you don't have your sensitivity super high, you're doing like almost two pans over on the entire trackpad, maybe even three. Yeah, even three sometimes, if you're going like one diagonal down to the other. For that reason, I would say 90% of the time that I've been using this over the past three months, I've had a mouse with it, and that's been a game changer, obviously, for the experience. When you are using the laptop on your lap here, the actual lift that is given by the mechanism when it pops out, this does dig into your lap a little bit. And I've even noticed there's some like rubber kind of hard feet here on the bottom, right here and right over here. And those are not the comfiest. So I'd say the on lap ergonomics are not the best for sure. If you're used to something like a regular laptop, that'll feel a lot more comfortable than this, I would say. When you have it on your lap, it's, it's possible to use the wedge, but really not comfortable. I don't think this is really the best laptop it's more of a notebook. <laughs> For the last topics, I kind of wanted to go into the speakers and the webcam. Now, unlike the Zephyrus Duo, the positive here is that it actually has a webcam. That is really important, I think, in 2022 now, uh, with pandemic life and having to do Zoom calls, remote classes, that's a feature that you really can't live without nowadays unless you have an external camera. Uh, the speakers themselves um, can get to pretty good volume. I really like the dedicated um, kind of function buttons above the number keys. It's nice that you don't have to press the function button to enable those. They're all kind of locked there. And there are a good amount of options there too. So you have everything from like turning off the webcam, the screen brightness, volume, the key brightness, um, some snip tools like the Asus software, turn the trackpad off, all that. And then also you have additional buttons above the, the trackpad that are for control as well with like the touchpad and performance mode and all that. The Harman Kardon speakers, I'd say sound pretty good. Uh, getting into the cons though, when you do have the wedge here on the bottom of the laptop, I believe that it kind of blocks the sound a little bit. So because the sound's coming from the side here and it bottom fires, the wedge actually being right in front of here, if you're right in front of the laptop, it does block the sound a little bit. I'll try to maybe insert a sound demo there that you can see that, but that is a huge oversight, I think. Also wish this thing was magnetic and that it would slot in. As of now, it just kind of sits there and while it does fit the shape well, it's easy to have it dislodged a little bit. Or worry about charging it. It's like the Energizer Bunny of the three. The price can be pretty heavily discounted on this sometimes. So check the links below. Uh, I've seen it as low as 50, and it retails for a little around 100. And for another downside, I'd say the webcam is only 720p. So I'll insert a clip here, but the quality is I'd say a little subpar for 2022. I feel like at this point, everything should probably be coming out with the 1080p front cam. All right, so here's a test on the ZenBook Duo. We have a little bit of uh, background fan noise, so wanna see if that comes through. Um, here's the, you can see the camera has a little bit of graininess. Let me add some front lighting. Let's see if that improves the graininess a bit. And there we go. So to sum up this laptop, I really liked it for video editing and just productivity in general. You know, having the ability to have two windows open down here or even three sometimes and have the full access of the 4K panel up top. For gaming, I think that this 
OLED screen is uh, quite frankly amazing. When I played Guardians of the Galaxy, which NVIDIA actually bundled with this computer, uh, you know, the 3070 with the i9 eight cores, it performed marvelously. It runs well, runs pretty fluidly. For the right person, I think this is actually a really good laptop. For me personally, I do think I'll be returning it. The compromises of the, the pros and cons I mentioned, I don't think really make it worth it for me, but I can see a lot of people using this and having a really good experience with it. Uh, I'm actually more interested in looking at the StudioBook OLED. It uh, just came out, it's the 16 inch version. I think that with the little dial on it is actually a really cool option. Um, that also has a 3070, but has AMD um, in terms of the actual CPU. So that's probably the laptop I would like to try next, um, looking for a replacement for my daily driver. So yeah, if you guys found this review useful, uh, let me know, give it a thumbs up, and I will try to do more in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. It is a pretty cool mechanism though. Rock solid.